Hi everyone, this is Amy and I'm here today with the Helms Academy Math Roundtable Recap. If you missed us on April 23rd, 2020 for Math Roundtable, this is a chance for you to see what information we covered or you have a chance to go back and review something that you got to see live. Come on and join us. So when we're solving a word problem, there are four steps that we're going to follow. The first one is to highlight or underline any important information that's in the problem. So we're looking for keywords, the numbers that we need, all of that. Then we need to determine which operations we need. So are we going to add, multiply, subtract, divide? Then we're going to write out the problem using the numbers and the operations, and then we will solve it. Let's take a look at our first word problem. It says Jason made 10 two-point baskets and th two three-point baskets in Friday's basketball game. He did not score any other points. How many points did he score? Okay, so the first thing that I did was I underlined our key information. I see 10 two-point baskets and pay attention because even though it's written as T-W-O and it's harder to identify, we still need to count that as a number. I also underlined two three-point baskets in Friday's basketball game. Um, that Friday's basketball game piece is wonderful information, but it's not useful in actually solving the problem. So it asks us the real core question here, how many points did he score total? So what I did is I started by just writing out my numbers, 10, 2, 2, and 3. So now that I have all of my numbers written out, what I'm going to do next is decide which operations need to go between the numbers. So I see that there are 10 baskets that are worth two points each. So that means that I need to multiply together the 10 and the two. I also see there are two baskets worth three points each, so that means I need to multiply together the two and the three. Now, if I'm trying to find out how many total points this man scored in the basketball game, then I need to take 10 times two and two times three and add them together. Now that we have all of our numbers, we can solve the problem. We'll have to use the order of operations, which we have a video about on the Helms Academy YouTube channel if you'd like to review. Just as a reminder, we'll have to do the multiplication before we do the addition. So let's start by doing all of our multiplication in the problem in order from left to right. 10 times two is 20. So we're gonna replace that 10 times two with the 20 on the next line. We're gonna pull down that addition sign because we're not using it just yet. And then we'll do the two times three, our other multiplication problem, which is six. Now we have 20 plus six, which means that our final answer is 26. So here you'll see the answers that they might give you on a GED or HiSAT test, and you'll have a multiple choice option bank. So you'll see here we have 22, 12, 24, 26. Many of the numbers look similar to our answer, and we might even see for letter B, for example, if we just looked at the number 10 and the number two in the word problem and didn't actually read what it was asking, we might jump to that 12 answer. But here, because we followed all of the steps and we broke it down, we know the right answer is 26. Let's take a look at our second word problem today. Kim is baking cookies for a large party and wants to double the recipe. The original recipe calls for two thirds cup of sugar. How many cups should she use for the double batch? So once again, we're gonna underline the important information here. So I've underlined the word double, two thirds cup, and then how many cups, because that's the final answer that we need to get. So I know that we need that number two thirds, so I wrote that at the bottom. And I wanted to make a note that when it says double, you can interpret double to mean times two. So when we put that together, we see that two thirds times two will be our problem, but there's a little more work we need to do to solve it. Because two is a whole number and two thirds is a fraction, and we wanna multiply them together, the easiest thing to do is to think of that whole number in its fraction form. Any whole number when written over the number one is the same. So two over one is the same as two. 
All right, so we have 2 thirds times 2 over 1. To get our answer, we just need to multiply the fractions straight across, straight across the top, and then straight across the bottom. So we do 2 times 2, which is 4, and 3 times 1, which is 3. So the answer we have here is 4 thirds. However, that's an improper fraction. And an improper fraction just means that the numerator is the top number, which is bigger than the denominator, the bottom number. All right, so when we have an improper fraction, what do we do? We turn it into a mixed number. Now, to do this, I like to think about it as a division problem, four divided by three. So if we think about how many times three goes into four, well, it goes in one whole time, okay? One whole time into four, and what's left over? Just one. So we put in that whole number one for the one whole time that it goes in, and then we use that remainder of one as the numerator, and we keep our denominator of three. So the changed mixed number is one and one third. So when you look at these multiple choice options, you can see how the creator of the options would have tried to trip you up a bit. There are a lot of similar numbers here, but we know that we solved this with the proper functions, so we know the correct answer is C, one and one third. Let's take a look at our final word problem for today. Sally gets paid X dollars per hour for a 40 hour work week and Y dollars for each hour that she works over 40 hours. So how much did Sally earn if she worked 48 hours? So let's look at the important information. I underlined X dollars because even though X is not a number, it's our variable and it's important for figuring out a solution to this problem. I underlined 40 hour work week, Y dollars, and then the phrase over 40 hours. And then I looked at what our totals are. How much did Sally earn if she worked 48 hours? So we need to know that number, but also what they're asking us to solve. Now I want to figure out how much Sally earned total. I know that Sally gets X dollars per hour for the first 40 hours. So I want to use that to figure out the first amount. X times 40 or 40X will be the beginning. Now I also know that if she works over 40 hours, she gets paid a different rate. That's Y dollars per hour. So I need to figure out how many hours did she work over the 40 hours? Well, it says here that she worked 48, which is an additional eight hours on top of what she had already earned. So that means that we're gonna to need to multiply that Y value by eight to figure out how much she worked or made in overtime. Now I know if Sally made 40X and she also made 8Y, to get the total, I'll need to add those together. Take a look at these multiple choice options. This is why it's so important to take apart the word problem first, solve it on your own, and then go back to the answers, rather than just picking what looks right first. You can see here that they have options like 48XY, 40Y plus 8X, 48X plus 48Y, and all of these might look right if all you did was glance at the problem first and then take a quick guess. But because we took the time to take it apart and to really solve this for exactly what it said it wanted to solve, we were able to find the correct answer, which is C, 40X plus 8Y. Thank you so much for joining me for this Math Roundtable. You can come to Math Roundtable live every Thursday at noon during April and May 2020. I hope that you'll come and join us and contact your coordinator if you have questions about how to join. You can check out the Helms Academy on Instagram, Facebook, and at helmsacademy.org. And don't forget to subscribe below to this YouTube channel.